Hi everybody, this is Source Audio, and this is a video tutorial showing some of the more advanced parameters in the Vertigo Tremolo in the Neuro app. To start, I've set up my Vertigo with all the knobs at 12 o'clock using the normal Opto Trem sound, and that's a good starting point for showing how all of these different parameters work. I'm actually going to skip all the way to the bottom of the parameter list and set up my Vertigo in stereo mode. So by default, from the factory, every Vertigo tremolo comes uh, working in true stereo mode. That means you have a separate channel on the left and on the right, and each one of them are affected independently. In this case, I have one guitar, mono input, and I have two amps hooked up. So I'd like, instead of using true stereo mode, to use mono input stereo output mode. In order to do that, you use the I.O. routing option, which is at the very bottom of the parameter list. Go into that menu and select Mono Input Stereo Effect. So now I have a good basic starting point for my stereo sound. At this point, I'll just go through all the different effects parameters in order so you can understand how they work. At the top of the list is the most important parameter. It's the effect type. This defines the basic sound of the effect. In this list, we have your standard normal opto trem, harmonic, bias, And those are the three main effect types that you'll find on the effect selector switch. Actually below that, we have a wide range of additional sounds like filtered tremolo and some other sounds which are very unique. I think for now, I'll stick with my normal opto tremolo. The first parameter, depth, sets the depth of the amplitude modulation for the tremolo effect. This basically determines how prominent the effect is. The second parameter, speed, sets the speed of the amplitude modulation. The shape parameter lets you define the shape of the LFO. You can go anywhere from square wave to an opto or sine shape to a sawtooth shape or anywhere in between. Level parameter, of course, sets the output level. Next come the speed control minimum and speed control maximum. These affect basically how the speed knob works. So speed control minimum sets the frequency that you'll get when the speed knob is set to its minimum value. Speed control maximum sets the speed you'll get when the speed knob is set to its maximum value. I'll start by setting each of those to their extremes. You can see we have a range here going from 0.25 hertz to 50 hertz. Anything above about 10 hertz gets you into ring modulator territory. So even though you can get some really interesting sounds in this high speed zone, 
If you're going for a more traditional sound, we'd suggest limiting it maybe to about 10 hertz. When you're using a stereo effect, channel 2 LFO phase offset lets you have the LFO of the right channel lag behind the LFO of the left channel. This can create some really interesting stereo effects. The next parameter is tap tempo. This lets you enter a BPM directly or tap in a tempo with your finger. This is really useful, for example, if you're recording to a backing track and you know the tempo. Next is the wet dry mix. Wet dry mix lets you set the mix between the wet signal, which is the signal that's gone through the tremolo effect, and the dry signal, which is the unprocessed input signal. This is probably easiest to hear if I select a different tremolo type. I'm going to go up and select the harmonic trem. And I'll set the depth up pretty high. And hopefully this will make it easier to hear what wet dry mix is doing. Moving on, we come to the EQ section. Every 1 Series product has a built-in 4-band parametric EQ. There's a treble band, a bass band, a low mid band, and a high mid band. Each one of these is parametric in the sense that you can set the frequency and the level. Uh, and in the mid bands, you can also set the Q. And lastly, there's a low cut option. Low cut enables you to cut out the lowest frequencies of the signal. This is especially useful for bass players. A lot of times there's a lot of low frequency energy which is just moving the speaker but it's actually too low for anybody to hear. It's actually useful a lot of times for guitar players as well. Sometimes you want to cut out the lowest frequency of the, of the guitar so that it doesn't step on what the bass is playing. The low cut filter ranges from off, where it's not doing anything, up to 80 hertz. And the last parameter in the list is the IO routing option, which is the one I changed at the very start. The Vertigo and other 1 Series products ship in true stereo mode. In this video we've been using it in mono input stereo effect mode, which takes a single input and splits it out to two separate outputs. There are lots of other useful 
Setups like stereo input to mono effect where you can mix a stereo input and output a mono signal. Uh, mono effect with dry through which lets you output the dry signal on one of the outputs separately. A mono effect with a doubled mono output. And even more interesting, you can use the Vertigo and other one series products as an external loop. So you can hook up another effect and you can use the Vertigo to turn that on or off. So for more information about these interesting stereo routing options, just check out the user guides, which are available on the Source Audio website.